Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim, and we talk about horror movies on this show. And boy oh boy, do we have a horrific film to talk about today. <laughs> hey Tim, how are you? You good? Oh, yeah, I'm alright. Yeah, you feel good, good. That's it's good to yeah. know because I, I, I want to gauge where you are before we start talking about this. Mm. So, one of the things we've been doing since October 2017, that's right, it's been over a year, since we started this franchise, we we did the Howling October 2017 for the October Thon, and we've been gradually chipping away at the franchise ever since. And today we are talking about the Howling Seven New Moon Rising. <laughs> and we'll start. You know what? Spoilers the whole thing. No one cares. Trust me. You do not care about this getting spoiled. There's nothing to spoil, even though there's technically a lot of twists towards the end. But it really. You don't care, trust me. <laughs> trust me. So just just to put this in perspective, just to give you a recap, if you've been watching all of our Howling reviews and listening to them, 4, 5, and 6 were garbage. <laughs> to varying degrees, right? They, they were all garbage. They, they, they peaked between the three of them, they peaked at like a 3 out of 10. That <laughs> That is the, the level of quality that we are currently in. And now I've been in a streak with the howling <laughs> so i will ask you this tim yeah did howling seven break <laughs> the streak or did you enjoy new moon rising did i enjoy new moon rising i no i did not enjoy new moon rising and the reason why i'm talking like that is, that <laughs> is because that's how every actor <laughs> "Quote unquote" actor in the movie <laughs> talks. Uh, this is this, no, this is true. In particular, uh, there's a detective. Apparently, mm. apparently, he's a detective. I don't buy it for a second. There's, yeah. there's never anything that actually convinces me that he's actually a detective. But he but, he, he talks about that. As, yeah. yeah, they may as well just had the detective actually rent the Howling movies. Like <laughs> I feel like that would have been more believable <laughs> than what he was doing. Uh, also, I I hope if you if if you're going to watch this movie, I hope you enjoy country music. I hope you enjoy <laughs> line dancing. Oh, you better love it! <laughs> and montages of of both of those things <laughs> happening a lot, because this is more like a ninety minute series of music videos that happens to have a little bit of plot around them, like on either side. That's essentially what this yep. is. I could be wrong here, but I have a theory that whoever held the howling franchise rights in the 90s lost them to a bar owner in a poker game <laughs> and because... they wanted to just promote their bar and all the country music yeah. Yeah, okay <laughs> I, I could see it jojo's baffling is this equally feels like oh they just wanted to to make a a, a, a collection of country music performances yeah uh, right it equally feels like that and that would imply they don't care about the Howling franchise. But at the same time, this is the only movie in the franchise that tries to, like, make sense <laughs> of continuity and, it, like, has characters appearing from 4, 5, and 6. The three yeah, worst ones. <laughs> well, now there's four worst ones, but... And it's not even, like, 1, 2, 3 are that good. 2, 3 yeah. especially. Like, that, that, this is a bad franchise. At, at least with, like, Hellraiser, right? Which I've not seen all the sequels yet. But at least with Hellraiser... <laughs> You probably love the first one at the very least. A lot of people like the second one. Mm-hmm. At least it's good before it goes to shit. The mm-hmm. first oh, Howling's sure. not even that good. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, like I, I like the first Howling enough. Like you know, we said it you know a couple of times. I I think it's a pretty good movie that just suffers from a boring middle. But there was stuff in the beginning and the end that I liked. Um, and then the yeah the second and third ones. Uh, definitely bad movies, but at least they're so crazy and cheesy that you can have a lot of fun with it. But then everything after that, they've just been so remarkably boring. And um, I honestly, I just watched this yesterday and I I don't think I could really tell you like anything what happens other than, yeah, that's just a lot of country stuff at a bar because there's like no plot, like especially no werewolf plot. Like, oh, God. It, <laughs> we'll I mean, talk about yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason. There's a reason why I left this until the last minute because I knew if we, if we, if I had any time between watching it and I was recording it, yeah. there would be no way in hell I'd remember any of this crap. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Like, uh, I, I can tell you that uh, there's some flashback to other Howling movies. Uh, they, someone, like, dropped some dirt and some chili. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a major plot point. Yeah. It's a major plot point. <laughs> that, that's about all I remember, though. <laughs> like, so, it's a small town... Apparently in Northern California, although it feels more like Texas. I don't. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm not sure who they're kidding with this. This sin, mm -hmm. uh, but they they so so this mysterious baker rolls into town and looks for a job, which instantly made me think of Helling Six because that was the you know the, the mysterious guy who shows up in town, and mm -hmm. remember how the preacher was like, oh. Uh, I'm so thankful you're here. Would you like to live with us and help me, you know, paint my church? Remember that? Yeah. Remember the whole plot? It, it didn't go <laughs> quite back. into that, but it was like he's asking for a job at the start, and the guys, the, you know, the guys like, well, we don't pay much, but you know, we'll give you something to eat and a place to stay. And he's like, oh, that's the best offer I've had all day. And I'm like, you're doing this again. <laughs> right. So that's the thing. I didn't recognize him at first, but when he started talking, the main guy Ted, I was like, wait a minute, he was in Hilling Five. This was the Australian guy from Helling 5, right? Mm -hmm. And later on, it showed you flashbacks, so it confirmed it. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, they actually got a character back, and he's like a main... And I couldn't remember how his story ended in 5, you know, I mean, quote-unquote story. But I was 5 the one in the castle? Yeah, 5 was the one in the castle. Okay. And I couldn't remember, like, how it ended, but I, I was like, yeah, I recognize him. I recognize his voice. This is insane. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I guess he's the werewolf there, assuming that he was, like, <laughs> left at the end of that movie with the werewolf. But it turned out he wasn't. When they show him in the flashback, it was actually a different character who was with the woman at the end. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> they, they, they do a bit of retcon to explain how he survived later on. It was like a new flashback showing that he got found in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, the, yeah, the, the werewolf plot, though, is, like, pretty much non-existent. Like, uh, I would say, you know, uh, it, not even, not including the flashback, you probably get less than a minute of werewolf screen time in this. Yeah, no, absolutely. Oh. What you get instead is you get this horrible red POV thing that is so mm -hmm. muddy and it's, it's so undetailed that you can't actually really make sense of what you're looking at when, it, when it's in the oh, red no. POV. <laughs> to the point where... There's a couple of times where this happened where I didn't even know who died because <laughs> it was just it was so awful. I didn't I, I, I couldn't make sense of what I was looking at. It was it was awful. It was it was like you know Highland Five was too dark to see anything. This did like a whole new thing. It's like hey everything's yep. in this really awkward red predator style thing, but it's like in Predator you still made out people's shapes. Mm -hmm. You still made, oh, made yeah. out what they were doing. Uh, to be fair, it could have been crystal clear HD, and I probably wouldn't have known who the character was. They all kind of just blurred together for me. It's like, all right, yeah, just a lot of drunk townsfolk. That's pretty much what you, what you got for characters in this. I'm just fighting a cat off camera. That's all. <laughs> uh, yeah, I so I couldn't believe in the first like half hour of this how many times we'd have like a quick scene where maybe like be you know four or five lines of dialogue and it'd be ted getting this job at the bar and showing that he's a bit of a smart ass and he makes up stories about mm -hmm. himself and then it'd be like you know maybe 30 seconds to a minute long scene and then we go back to another montage of line dancing and country music <laughs> and like and it's like really weird like i don't know like it seems like they're trying to do like music videos or stuff or something but like it'll just be you know, like, someone will be sitting at a bar, and then, like, another person will just pop up. And, and I don't mean, like, they'll walk up to it. Like, they'll literally just, like, you know, like, pop into frame, and then followed by, like, another one. Like, <laughs> it's a music video, but it's, like, the shittiest, most boring <laughs> music video ever. It is painfully boring. So here's the thing. So the only thing that's going on outside of this, obviously, eventually, people start dying. And the plot is kind of that people suspect that Ted's behind deaths. Because they really like mm -hmm. him at first, but then they get suspicious of him. Um, and when I say that, like, I, I, when I say that, it sounds like there's more going on than there actually is. Mm -hmm. When you watch it in this movie, it's so just out and, like, all of a sudden someone's died and someone suspects that it's him and there's, like, a couple of scenes of them kind of, like, snooping out of his room or whatever and that, that is it. Yeah. Like, that's all there is. And, and Ted's the, like, the writer and director and everything too, right? Uh, Ted's with Clive Turner. Yes. Yes. He, he... <laughs> He directed himself in this, yes. Yeah. So it's like, of course, he's like also the 
like perfect like can do no wrong like everyone pretty much instantly loves him he always has the most exciting stories and people are kind of like hanging on his every whim and stuff and you know it's just like there's no like character to him it's just like he shows up he's very charming enigmatic uh he gets a job uh some people suspect him but holy it never seems like people don't like him right so he actually wrote Helling four and five as well as this one but he only oh. directed four in this one so the so five the one that he was like a major character for the first time he uh <laughs> he didn't direct that one he just came back to be an actor which is okay. weird what what's really bizarre is that eventually there's a, like a flashback to four and it points out that he was in four as well as as like a cameo and mm-hmm. it's such a random like one note little cameo where he's like this driver of a truck or something like that that i was like wait what i, I don't believe for a second that he was like he, you know <laughs> when, when they put him in howling five i don't think for a second they intended that to be the same character that he was in howling four because in howling oh, no. four it's just a cameo to the point where i actually i looked him up in imdb to check if it was actually him uh the, the popped up again because remember how in the last movie in six i said there was a cameo from the the, the girl from from five there was the werewolf oh, at the circus okay. this one mentions the circus it mentions they're being at the circus it also shows you clips of five it shows you clips of four the main character the survivor of four is a character in this movie she shows up and she's like living in this town as well they're all living in this yeah. town somehow <laughs> This is insane. It, it's trying to like make sense of the last like three movies, and nothing does. Like every movie makes like new rules for the. At one point in this, because the, the the side plot, the, the the detective plot, if you will, is this detective who's like seventy years old interviewing a priest who's like sixty years old, and he's asking him about werewolves and stuff. And the priest keeps telling him this story, and at one point he just randomly says. And tonight is the three-year anniversary of that night in Budapest. <laughs> and that's how long it takes for a werewolf to become fully grown when they mature. <laughs> and I'm like, since when? Yeah, when has that ever been established? It's like, now, now the werewolf can make other werewolves. He couldn't do that before. Yeah. <laughs> Despite the fact that, like, every movie has been about, like, someone becoming a werewolf, like... <laughs> Every single one is <laughs> is maddening. Um, like is... I, I I do appreciate the effort to like try to make sense of continuity and tie stuff together. And like, uh, I mean that that could have been like a fun batshit crazy thing if you, you you know like have a really insane plot or whatever. But they kind of went just the most boring way possible with it, where it's just like, hey, right, we're just gonna take characters from every movie and have a detective ask him questions and show flashbacks. It's like. Oh, this is like the boringest, most lazy way to try to tie anything together. A detective well, who doesn't believe anything he's hearing from this priest who's mm-hmm. like a werewolf hunter or like enthusiast or whatever, <laughs> until he suddenly does out of nowhere, like halfway through, and he just kind of goes along with everything. But so here's, the, so here's the thing the movie starts, and we find this detective, like, find this dead body. And he goes mm-hmm. to this priest to talk about, uh, like, anything that, you know, the exorcisms and anything the church deems unholy. And I don't know why, why he's like he's led to that to, to even go to him in the first place. But they start talking, right? It's night time and they start talking and he's like, oh, I need to tell you about werewolves in Budapest and 300 years ago. And he's like, well, this is a long story. And by the way, every time it cuts back to them, at least in the first half of the movie, every single scene with them ends in the exact same way where the cop leans forward and goes, you know, buddy, this is a lot to take in. Can we take a break? <laughs> <laughs> and then it cuts back to the line dancing like that yeah. is literally the formula for the first half of this movie <laughs> yeah like he, he always like ends up like wanting to go back to the bar or get a drink or something and like everything like feels so repetitive like even mm-hmm. like the dialogue I, I feel like everyone always says stuff twice like i think there's one scene where he's like you know like now i'm only concerned with the facts and then like the priest will be like all right well i'm only going to tell you the facts good because i only want to hear the facts it's like (laughs) what are we doing here (laughs) so here's the thing that really got me though is that the first couple of times we see them they're they're in the priest's like you know office and Mm -hmm. it's night time then then it cuts to like you know ted arriving at the barn getting the job and it cuts back to the the priest and the guy talking the detective it's okay fine it's the same night and then it cuts to like the next day there's a montage set to country music 
of <laughs> Ted, like, on his first day on the job. It's during the day, and he's sweeping up, and then he starts, like, all three of the guys start dancing in the bar, <laughs> and he's been sweeping, like, you know, the, the floor, in the, or not the floor, you know what I mean, he's been, yeah, he's been sweeping the floor, but he's been sweeping, like, the trash into his little container, and then he starts, like, holding the container up when he's dancing, and I'm like, it would all fall out. You clearly haven't been, like, this has been fake. You've not been doing anything this whole time. Like, oh. but, so, right, and then, then, that's the thing. So after this montage, during the day of Ted's first day in the job, which is clearly the next day because he arrived at the bar at night, <laughs> it cuts back to the detective and the priest still sitting in his office at night time. <laughs> and it, right, and I'm like, wait, have they been, like, there for 24 hours? Have they been sitting talking this whole night? What's happening? And then it cut back to Ted at, at his work, talking to some of the patrons of the bar. And then it cuts back to the conversation with the detective and the priest. And <laughs> this is where this like section where they're in his office finally ends for this first batch. Mm -hmm. And I laughed out loud when the detective said, you know what, it's getting pretty late. We should, we should probably continue <laughs> this tomorrow. And I'm like, no wonder, it's been going for two whole days already, you tit. <laughs> and... Do you know what it is? You know that this wasn't meant to be cut up. You know that they shot this to be one scene that was going to be mm -hmm. one night, and then they said, shit, this is too boring. We have to cut it up over, like, three or four parts. And because of that, it now technically takes place over, like, four days. Yeah. I'm sure the detective was like, I'm tired. Like, let's just... <laughs> we got... I can't say this same scene four more times. We gotta... <laughs> I, uh... And it, it's so funny, to, like, when you're thinking about you know, like, usually when we see, like, you know, cop scenes or, you know, interrogation scenes or, like, questioning stuff, like, in movies, it's usually so fast-paced, and you have, like, you know, these detectives are like, I don't want you leaving that room until you get a confession, and then it's just funny in this to have a cop be like, I, I can't hear any more of this, like, let's come back tomorrow, <laughs> like, it's just so, like, lazy, <laughs> it's it, insane. He talks very slow, he repeats things like you said, yeah. he reminds me a lot of, like, the mum in the room. Or the way she would speak in that, that movie, where, where, she, yeah. where she would kind of like slowly explain everything she's talking about, I feel like mm -hmm. he speaks the same way. Yeah, um, I, mean, that's, I feel like that's like a classic, uh, just like bad script writing, where it's yeah. you know it, it's the you know you're you're you know telling people you're not showing them like usually you'll you know kind of like suss out a character or what's happening through their kind of you know their actions and their dialogue instead of just having. You know, characters very blatantly tell you, like, what's up. Like, that's not, like, how people talk in, like, real life. <laughs> yeah, it's like, he, he not only, like, says too much, but he also, and not only over-explains it, but he also kind of, like, telegraphs how he feels about it in a weird way through the yeah. dialogue. <laughs> like, he, he has to really point out, like, oh, this is surprising to hear that the werewolves mm -hmm. exist. It's really hard to take in. Can, can can you try and break this down for me a little bit more, please, sir? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it just I don't know. Like if, if everything felt long and drawn out in his dialogue, and yeah. the, a lot a lot of the bar patrons felt like that. The, you know, the people who work at the bar mostly felt like that as well. I, Maybe not as bad, but I guess uh, supposedly I think uh, I I don't know about like every character, but I think the majority of the people in the movie were just actual residents of this town. Uh, like, I, I think they just used uh, basically regular people, which kind of explains the acting. I yeah, think. they're all terrible, so that, <laughs> that, that, that tracks. Yeah. Like, everyone, uh, you know, everyone's very stiff and wooden. Uh, you can tell that they're reading from cue cards. Uh, uh -huh. I, I was reading something online that, yeah, most of the people just, their characters are just their real names because people couldn't remember, like, <laughs> like being a character. <laughs> yeah. It, it makes a thing because the the owner, the couple who own this bar, like she, the the the, the wife's a like, the country singer and she does a lot of performances. And mm -hmm. there's so many times where it'll just cut to her like talking to the crowd, and it's like her, you know, making the small talk, you know, to the crowd before she gets into her song. She yeah. sets it up with context, and we do that like four times in the movie, including the ending. Like after the very abrupt ending to the actual werewolf plot, it just cuts to her like talking to the crowd again, saying, "Hey, do you want to hear me yeah. sing a song about this?" And then she starts singing, and the credits start rolling. And I, I was actually starting to, like, miss uh, the song from Helling 2, you know, the, in the pale moon, light of the moon. Remember how that, that, that got played, like, eight times in that movie? You know what? Oh, I yeah. miss that. I miss that after this. Oh, yeah, I would gladly take that song. Uh, I mean, or it would have been great to see him maybe do a country cover of it. That could uh, be fun. I mean, that movie had 
you know, for cheese, red, brown, and I also had Christopher freaking Lee. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it was bad, but it had something going for it. That, that's, this is definitely. painfully boring to sit through. There's yeah. just so much time killing. And whenever there is actually like a confrontation or there's actual plot happening, everyone's just like half asleep as they read their lines. It's, it's... Yeah, it's, <sighs> it's really hard to tell what's going on, but not because the movie's confusing, just because it's so goddamn boring. It's like a challenge to pay actually attention. pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will say the, the last act is actually quite confusing because we get to this point where... The, the detective and the priest are debating what's actually going on and who's the werewolf. <laughs> and they start, like, presenting their versions of this, what they think's happening. And, cause, and this is the other weird thing about this, is that those two don't interact with anyone else in the movie until after <laughs> this, uh, you know, until this scene where they're, they're theorizing what's going on and they're talking about everyone like they know who everyone is, even <laughs> though they've not been involved with any other character up until this point. And then after this scene where they're theorizing what's going on and we're seeing their versions play out and, you know, as if it's happened, um, mm -hmm. then they do start interacting with characters as if they've been doing that the whole movie. So it feels really <laughs> disconnected to me. But So we have this scene where they're sitting down and they're talking about, okay, so the priest is like, no, it's Ted. Ted's the werewolf and here's how he did it. And he explains mm -hmm. how why he's here and what he's doing and, and he killed this guy and he killed it. Because we see, we see a couple of people die, both of whom get mm -hmm. into kind of fights with Ted for different reasons. One doesn't mm -hmm. like him uh, because he's like blackmailing him or something like that, and then the other guy is a is just an idiot in the bar that he he basically made a fool of by doing this little magic trick that turned out to just be oh, like a, yeah. a trick to you know <laughs> take his money, uh, just to teach him a lesson more than anything else. Which, by the way, after that guy turns up dead, they check his wallet and he's got his own newspaper clipping showing that he's a convict <laughs> or showing that he's a, a parolee. <laughs> who's out but he's like a murderer and i'm like what he's a murderer and again this is delivered with such flat dialogue of like the, the woman who runs the bar going oh my god he's a convict uh, what <laughs> <laughs> what is this oh movie <laughs> uh so but yeah so, so the 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 priest explains why he thinks it's ted and then the detective for some reason like adamantly believes that it's not ted and explains no no you know, we don't have anything other than the fact that he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. It could be this, it could be that. And he explains some alternate versions. To the point, by the way, where he then explains a scene that's happened with Ted when Ted mm -hmm. tried to escape that we actually didn't get to see yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Because at one point he starts saying how, oh, and then Ted, when he was confronted, tried to run, so I chased him down and got him in my mm -hmm. car. And I'm like, this never happened. We never saw this. <laughs> and from this yeah, point yeah. on, like when he goes back to Ted, they've got him locked in his motel room and he, mm -hmm. he's sort of imprisoned there for the time being. But we never mm -hmm. actually saw how he got caught. We never actually did that part of the movie. The, the, the detective explains it as if it's already happened. And I guess it did, but we just cut over it. And now we see it when he's explaining it. But keep in mind, before this scene, we never see a detective talk to any other character other than the priest and the, no. the character from the, the, the fourth movie who he goes and interviews. Yeah, this movie's not very overly concerned with basically, like, showing us anything. I think especially very evident with the ending. This is a case where not only did they tell us instead of show us, or for, no, they, they did show us, they showed us as he was telling us, but they did that mm. instead of just showing it when they actually had the footage of it happening. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Tim, explain it's it to me. I don't understand. <laughs> it's very mind-boggling. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's kind of... I'm, I'm very surprised when you, you said that this guy also directed the fourth movie. Because, like, you know, the fourth movie, obviously not good, but at least it seemed more like a movie. Like, this is... I don't know, literally, it, it's very bizarre how they made this. It's just I, I remember four so being many. equally as boring, although this one's definitely worse sure. because it's got just all this weird country <laughs> music stuff going on as well. It's bizarre. I feel I feel like all of the Halloween movies, for some reason, have to have their thing. Like, you know, the sixth one's got the circus. Uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the fifth one's the, 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 the castle. The, the, the fourth yeah. one's the kind of just shitty remake of the first one. The third oh, one right, is right. the marsupials. Yeah. 
Like, I just, but, but the, the actual, the, the plot of the movie gets actually really convoluted and hard to understand. I don't actually know for sure what really happened. Like, because we, we find out that, um, because because we see that Ted is making these recordings and it's like he's investigating the town and I think at first we're kind of impl- it's implied that oh he's, he's getting ready for all the werewolves to come in because he's a werewolf mm-hmm. and then it turns out no 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 he is hired to investigate this town because apparently a lot of a, a lot of the biggest criminals in the country are hiding in this town uh, by the way a fact that never comes up again <laughs> right we, we'd already found the one convict who who turned up dead mm-hmm. but everyone else never gets brought up again so was he like an australian fbi agent i don't know i don't know but he was paid to do this and the first guy who died was the guy that apparently paid him to do this but then later on he's accused of being blackmailed by that guy because that guy was going to expose who he really was that means that he wasn't actually hired to do this expose on the town so i actually don't know which one it was it left it in such a murky place i don't think it made it clear was he there to do the expose? Was he there because he was on the run? Was he there because, like, it, it offers both, mm-hmm. up, but it's not like in this way where it's, it's intentionally ambiguous because it's made, like, because by the end, he's clearly still supposed to be a good character because he mm-hmm. teams up with the cop to trick the actual werewolf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's just there for the, the music, <laughs> the ambience. Yeah. I will say this, the, the twist of who the werewolf is, who, by the way, turns out to be the same werewolf as the fifth movie, um, works in a way because i didn't remember what she looked like even though it shows me her photo multiple sure. times from the it shows you a photo from five multiple times throughout mm-hmm. this movie and i still didn't recognize her when she revealed it was her and i checked it's the same actress oh, okay <laughs> i double checked Ma- mary lou is played by the same actress uh, right. and it turns out that she set all that because she eventually you know gets ted she, she she breaks ted out of the the room as if she wants to help him for some reason and sits him down and then basically implies that she's behind the whole thing. And he's like, oh, you're behind all this. And I'm, I'm like, what do you mean all this? Like, as, as if there was some master plan. Because for some reason she was in cahoots with the woman from 4, even though the woman from 4 wasn't a werewolf, but she was in cahoots with her. And she was the one who hired Ted, but then she killed the woman from 4 to like, cover her tracks. And now she's going to kill Ted. But then it turns out, no, 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 no. This was all a ruse from him and the cop. The cop shows up. They wanted to hear, hear her confess. <laughs> but she's like, hey, Ted, don't you recognize me? We've met before in Budapest. I'm Mary Lou. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, but it's the same actress, so I can't argue with them. I, I guess it is her. Uh, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I guess... It makes perfect sense. There's no need to question anything. <laughs> do you know what this is? This is a horrible script and a horrible script mm. writer who's trying to do like a really smart, intelligent, like twisty thriller. Mm. That's what this is. This is someone who thinks they're trying to be really smart, but it's a mm. mess and nothing comes across coherently. Oh yeah, and I'm sure he wrote what he thought was probably a great, you know, thirteen page script. Uh, <laughs> And then, <laughs> I, do you know what, Tim? I would love to know how many pages the script has actually. Yeah. I, that's, a, that's a good thing to bring up. I would love to know how how long it is because so much of it is just freaking line dancing. <laughs> Which, by the way, and Ted like, has a love interest. He he has a love interest that apparently has not had a lot of romance since her she got divorced like years ago, and she's like very standoffish, and she like says, "No, I don't want to have sex because it's been a while." And she says that like three times, and then eventually she just says, you know what, yeah, no, you can stay, let's have sex. And then it's irrelevant, it never gets brought up again. The fact that he's with someone romantically is irrelevant for the whole rest of the movie. Well, maybe she had to wait three years so she could make babies or something. And then, yeah, but basically, <laughs> basically after the cop and the, 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 the Ted confront her, um, she she runs out. She well, she's done. So first, she transforms into the wolf, which is some of the worst <laughs> werewolf transformation mm-hmm. effects I've ever seen. And by effects, all I mean is the 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 images fade from her to the werewolf, but stretches at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's god awful. She runs out of the the building, <laughs> thinking she's going to get away, but the entire town are waiting there with guns and. I say they blast her to hell. You hear the gunshots when the camera cuts away. <laughs> you don't actually get to see anything. And then it comes oh, no. to a country 
music number with the it, the, the old woman. Like the, this is insane. Like first of all, like one of the most important things in a uh, werewolf movie is the transformation sequence. So I, I'm assuming this movie had like no money, but if you are gonna spend anything. Yeah, at, at least do enough to get a little bit of werewolf going on here, but it looks like a, you know, 1994 screensaver or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is uh, ridiculous. That's a good first for it. It's a 1994 yeah. screensaver. Uh, and, it, and it's like, yeah, it's literally like 10 seconds and then, yeah, okay, so if you can't do the transformation sequence, at least be able to get someone in a costume and then see someone you know, fight it or whatever, but it, it's crazy. Like you said, it, you know, they show him, like, cocking the gun or whatever, and then it just, like, you know, black screen, and you hear, like, the gunshots. Like, they, they don't even show it. It's insane. That's, that's, this is somehow worse than the last three movies, <laughs> and the last three were all terrible. I, I am <laughs> baffled by that. Do you know how I would describe this movie? Uh, I, I tweeted this out, actually, when I was watching it. <laughs> This movie feels like you're visiting someone else's really boring grandparents. <laughs> and they won't shop about country music. I mean, even one of the plot points in the movie, if you even call it that, is that Ted keeps trying to like, get everyone into this country singer that he likes. So he's got all these cassettes that he keeps like sort of pushing on people. Um, and there's a scene actually where they accidentally put in the tape that he's been recording his own thoughts about the town on. <laughs> and they all go really quiet, and he, like, walks in and says, you weren't meant to hear that, and, like, walks off, and they're all, like, upset at him. <laughs> but nothing that you actually hear from the tape sounds that bad. No. It just sounds like he's saying, oh, that's a really nice little town, and everyone kind of is mesmerized on it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I, yeah, mm. Mesmerized is kind of, like, a good word for it, because everyone does just seem like they're just, like, blanket, like, they just, like, are vacant dolls that... <laughs> They're just always like staring off into the distance, and, like uh, e even like, the the line dancing, which is, I've never line danced myself, but I imagine that people do it because they like it and they have fun with it. This seemed like the most stiff, robotic, like in line dancing, like ever. Like no one looked like they're having fun. They're all just like not smiling, Tim, <laughs> moving very slowly. <laughs> line dancing is serious business now. That's not. It's just not for fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You also see him dance with the love interest like five times. Like where he'll take her off mm -hmm. the, from the bar and like they'll, you know, I, I, I'm sure I saw him do the same like spin move with her, with her like mm -hmm. like four or five times. It, but yeah. th this this movie is 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 something else. Like mm -hmm. it, it's not as it's not as terrible as something like say Birdemic, but it. Like that said, there is some pretty dodgy like dialogue recording at some points where someone's like clearly slightly off mic. Mm -hmm. There's a few scenes yeah. like that. It was, in fact, uh, see the scene I was talking about earlier where it's the detective and the the priest like telling each other their what they think's happened. Mm -hmm. There's at one point I thought it cut to a different scene uh, later on because the, the 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 audio quality changed, but then it cut back to the same scene like because it, it cut to like footage of stuff happening as he was talking over it. But the the, the the quality of what he was saying, the recording, sounded different that I thought this was meant to be later and him like in a different location talking to someone else. But then it cut back and they were still sitting in the same room having the same conversation. Oh, yeah. So that's just one of those things. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, you know, e even on a, you know, technical level, like, uh, you know, the, the film quality is pretty bad. The audio is really bad. Like, the, there isn't anything about this that... Uh, is like that redeeming like i mean like to be fair um there were definitely parts i laughed at you know because of the oh this is so dumb and bad kind of thing but it's not really one that i could recommend like it's not a you know troll to room kind of situation no. where it's like oh my god you gotta see it it's, it's, it's too boring most of it, yeah it's far, far too boring like, for that yeah like I, I would definitely recommend maybe people like if if you can look up clips or something of it, like you know, watch a minute or two to get a sense of it, and then just imagine that times like you know ninety minutes. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's so painfully like slow and boring. It yeah, because uh, even struggle to get through. even not in the line dancing stuff, there's so many scenes <laughs> of like one of them telling a joke at the bar, and then like the mm -hmm. the woman coming out and like chastising them for not working or something like that, and then mm -hmm. but it'll always linger on that moment for like an extra minute. A little longer yeah. than see if you cut all that out if you cut the line dancing out and the country music mm -hmm. montages you'd be left mm -hmm. with maybe like 20 minutes of plot yeah maybe <laughs> yeah. 
about it. <laughs> maybe <laughs> fifteen. Be yeah. Um. This is this is atrocious. I I can't imagine. Like oh, clearly that these were making uh, money on VHS. They they kept letting this guy make his these direct to video hurling sequels because mm. he did three of them. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't know. Oh boy. Also, it's kind of funny how six is kind of like this mm. weird odd one out where six isn't. Like wasn't really anything to do with him, but it did reference the the, the killer from five. So they they mm. did reference it in this, but it was really four and five that tie heavily into this one. Yeah. So <sighs> I, I Tim, I, <laughs> I, I this might be the worst franchise I've ever watched. Uh well, you know, I uh, so what, what do you have? One more movie left? Yeah, one more left. Yeah. Okay. The, so, the, I, the Twilight inspired one. Oh Jesus! Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I I doubt that the last one will really redeem it or anything. But yeah, this this one's really tough. Like I, it's I, as I was thinking the same thing the other day. I was like, yeah, is this my most hated franchise? Um, and then, you know, the the one we always you know we always talk about is Saw. Neither of us like the Saw movies, but. At least, though, with Saw, like, it's, you know, it's bad. I don't like it, but I get what they're going for. And I I, I can understand that there are people out there that, you know, that like Saw or whatever. Um, yeah, so, Saw is obnoxious, I think, in what it's doing. But, like, just on, like, basic filmmaking levels, it's, it's yeah. better than this. Yeah, I, I think when it comes down to it, I'd rather watch something that is actually competently made versus something that is just barely a movie strung together that's well it's it, it's really rough <laughs> it's, yeah it's barely a movie that it's like it's not quite birdemic levels by any means but it, it is barely a movie sure. <laughs> like it, it, it barely qualifies as one and yeah. yeah this this was this was painful to sit through it was dull it was boring it was repetitive and there was very few like i i laughed out loud because it kept cutting back to the same scene of the mm-hmm. cop and the, the priest because the like, days yeah. were passing and it was still the same night for them. That was making me laugh every time it cut back mm-hmm. to them. But that was, that was the, the most fun I had, I think, yeah. in the whole I, thing. And I think it's easier to laugh about it in retrospect. Like you're not really laughing that much when you're watching it other than mm. maybe just being like, you, you might do a, like, are you kidding me? What? <laughs> uh, but like, uh, yeah, it's not like one where you're really laughing out loud. Like it's kind of funny talking about it now and like referencing the line dancing, the the music, the <laughs> the fart scene or something like, you know. But as you're watching it, like you're not really laughing that much. Or, or the random scene where they're in the bathroom just so they can make a dick joke. Oh right. <laughs> yeah, you know, just just ra- like it's full of just random things. There's, oh, this is what we can do in our one bar set. Yeah, <laughs> you know that'll fill like more than half the movie up. Mm. It's it's mm. oh, it's, it's awful. So mm. yeah, uh, I, I guess we'll I guess we'll read it. That's, mm. that's, that's, that's not that's not much more to add. Uh, insane, convoluted like kind of twists towards the end that make, don't make a whole lot of sense. Um, mm. uh, all the kill scenes are in this red POV that's like yeah impossible to make anything out. Uh, mm-hmm. terrible acting through and through, terrible dialogue through and through, uh, very lack lacking in plot, lacking in werewolf, <laughs> lacking in everything, yeah. uh, dodgy production values. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't know, Tim. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you rate this. Because I, I, I feel like, I feel like, you know, if I look at the things that I've given a one on this show, Mm-hmm. Or a zero, even because we give it watches a zero, and it watches is worse than this. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is like a one point five. That's actually exactly <laughs> where I was thinking. Yeah, because <laughs> like the yeah, because uh, like the the other movies that we've given ones to, I think to get a one, I think you actually have to induce anger. Yes, in yes. Uh, Joe, I was thinking of I was thinking of the mm-hmm. darkness in my head okay we, we get, i give that a one and that was obviously i mean it's a it's an actual produced movie with kevin bacon in it so it's, it's got better value than this in terms of yeah. just how it looks and stuff but um that made me angry yeah <laughs> that's that made me angry that's just made me like painfully bored and apathetic 
Yeah. And and like the and you know, there's other movies that maybe might be boring or bad or cheesy, or whatever, but maybe you give it a two or a three because they have little bright spots or you know, there's one little sequence that was fun or anything, but that really isn't anything like this. I think the point five is nice just because all right, there's a few funny things and it you know, looking back on it in retrospect, there's some stuff that you can kinda laugh about, but yeah, like and I, really, I, I, you can't get much higher than that. I guess the point five, if nothing else, is just for trying to tie the last three movies into some sort of continuity. Sure. When sure. they were all separate before, like they, like sure, the, the the werewolf from five had a cameo in six, but you know, yeah. blinking you'll miss it. But other than that, they are three standalone movies that have nothing to do with each other. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> if you had tied in the marsupials, they didn't do that. But, uh, you know, now they're taking real balls. Yeah. <laughs> Take a little balls. Hey, anyway, so we got one left. We got one howling movie left. We'll get to that. You know, hopefully, uh, soon. I say hopefully because we're, we're going through like five franchises now <laughs> and rotating <laughs> through them. But uh, we have one howling movie left. It's called Howling Reborn, and it's much oh, later because okay. it was like 2011. This was 1995. Mm-hmm. The next one's 2011. Was there? Oh, wait. Am I crazy? Was there already like a rebirth or something? <laughs> movie yeah howling five is called the rebirth <laughs> okay this is reborn all right yeah nice <laughs> yeah um so yeah that's the thing um so we'll get to that soon um i mean i'm expecting it to be terrible i being made in 2011 though means that it'll be at least in hd and won't look like shitty vhs so that's that's a plus yeah like at least <laughs> you know i'll be able to understand most of the dialogue and stuff so i'm sure there'll be yeah some bright spots like that oh yeah there was absolutely lines of dialogue in this that i didn't catch but just because they yeah. were just inaudible yeah mm-hmm. absolutely and god bless uh if any i don't know if anyone's gonna be tasked with having to do some type of hd remaster for this movie but uh <laughs> Tim, good, good there luck. is <laughs> no demand for this maybe, maybe the, the people who own the bar if they're still alive maybe they want yeah. the hd remastered but I feel like, you know, there are horror nerds that would want, like, a full box set, even though, you know, that's uh, probably not the best thing, but... Oh, my God. <laughs> Imagine a marathon of the Halloween movies. That would... That would take some, uh... <laughs> some balls. Uh, do you know what the thing is? I, I'd, I'd rather watch Rob Zombie's Halloween again and watch, like, Ooh. four, five, six, or seven of this again, because they're all... They're, they're all at least that movie makes me angry. Like sure, like the last four of these are just like so painfully dull to sit through. Yeah. I don't know, maybe if you need something to fall asleep to, or I don't know. <laughs> There's got to be some use for it out there. Yeah, cure for insom- insomnia. Yeah, that's, that's what they're for. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that that, that wraps up Howling Seven and New Moon Rising. And what was the New Moon Rising? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if they ever showed a moon. <laughs> In the movie. Oh, they did. Uh, right before um, okay. the, the werewolf transformed at the end, she looked out the window and saw a full moon. So there was a oh, full moon. Okay. <laughs> that was a thing. So, yeah, uh, that, that is the show. Uh, if you want to support the show, um, you can head over to patreon.com slash TV, and you can uh, get get access to voting for one of the episodes every month. You get access to more stuff. Uh, some stuff you get early, uh, but mostly you get a warm, fuzzy feeling inside for supporting us mm-hmm. and helping us out and uh, keeping the episodes coming uh, but you can also support us in other ways by liking and subscribing all that stuff youtube really values likes like it makes things show up in search results and recommends videos mm-hmm. out based on likes so if you like the show you like to rambling about this then click the like button <laughs> whatever uh, i feel like it's such a shell asking for likes but it's, it's actually youtube care about it so. yeah that's fair yeah uh but, but yeah it gets on twitter at screams midnight uh, if you want some updates and things and things of that nature uh, you could do that. Uh, you could also... Is there anything else to promote? I don't know. Um, do you know I, I feel like what, something we don't do enough at the end of these is like promote something else that we do. Um, like on, on, on sure. mail funds. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll take this time. If you enjoy video games, me and Connor do a monthly video game mm. podcast now called 1080bit. Maybe Tim will guest mm. star uh, someday. Oh, sure. Yeah. If he wants to talk about <laughs> games. Um, mm. But yeah, we just had a second episode uh, of that recently. Uh, in fact, by the time you see this, the third one might be up because this, this is getting recorded a little bit in advance. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, so yeah, so that's a meaty podcast we do once a month. 
so check that out. There's an audio feed, of course. It is also on the YouTube page, as you'd expect. But uh, that is us. So thank you very much once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies, guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>